Hello, my name is Saki Fukuoka and I am not a scientist. I'm not a student of Kyoto University either. Then why am I here giving a speech? Well, the answer is hidden in the previous talk. First of all, I would like you to join me in this game. You have to do, what you have to do is try to remember as many words as possible on the screen in 15 seconds. Of course, I will ask you later. Are you ready? Go. Oh God. <laughs> no memories. Three, two, one, time's up. By the way, what I wanted to prove here is that the more familiar the word is, the easier to remember. Now, could you tell me the words you remember? Were you happy? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you remember? Me. Kevin? Natsume. Natsume. That's it? Great, thank you. And do you think they're familiar? Do you think they are familiar to you? Thank you. Perfect. Let's ask, let's ask another person. Mm. <laughs> yes. yes, please. What do you remember? I remember uh, DJ Tashat. Uh huh, really? Yeah, the, the, the European names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. You must be a big fan of beer. <laughs> okay. And you think they're familiar? Yeah, more than uh, <laughs> they show me a person. Great. Thank you for the answer. Sounds like, sounds like using familiarity potentially help people to remember and understand. I, as a person from outside, would like to talk about another approach that people often omit when they're making presentations. When you get to talk to people, I assume you use some words and some visual information, especially to someone from a different field. You might try to use familiar words for them. You also care about visuals very much, using 3D and computer graphics and so on. In the field of metal organic frameworks, this graphic is used to show how they look like. Indeed, using realistic picture is one of the most effective ways to explain some complicated subjects. Here is a picture of the Scorpio. Well, unless you're really into stars, it is hard to tell where they are in this picture, isn't it? So here is a picture of a scorpion. Can you tell it yet? Not really, right? So this is an example of when realism does not help understanding. What I wanted to tell you as a take home message for today is that sometimes not using realistic picture might help people understand. Could you remember the chemical library which was mentioned in the previous talk, which actually looks like this. When I saw it for the first time, I thought, oh, it is a big fridge. Right? That's it. <laughs> I would call it knowledge, knowledge level one. Then I saw the compounds inside, thinking, oh, there's a lot. Level two. If there were name tags on each compound, I will be able to know what exactly I contain in the fridge, I mean, the library. So it would be level three. Unfortunately, 
they are no name tags because they are too small and too many and the names are way too long. Then why don't you put names on the photo of it? Done! So it's level 3. However, what if I draw like this? People might be curious of the details and could even develop this interest in science. But if I make this picture with computer graphic, I will have to start by googling how to CZ and it will take a lot of time as well. And money. So I take a pen and a piece of paper to draw. Easy. Now you might be wondering, it's not that easy for me. Then ask, ask somebody, you know. That's what we did. We, okay. In, um, nevertheless, I believe it still contains the same level of information. And in this case, compared to the realistic picture, I mean the photo, illustration can express information to the audience, no matter how old and how much they're educated. Moreover, the realistic picture, a heading for nothing more and nothing less than reality, illustration can attach extra emotion and impressions in, as it were, expressing something does not exist. Also, it doesn't cost you much. As I said, if you can't, ask your friend. Could be me. To speak of extremes, I am guessing most of you from this institute know what neutrino is. Since the Physics Nobel Prize was awarded to neutrino science in 2015, I as a person on the street have heard of it. Although it is hard to be interested in something you, you can't, um, something cannot be seen and you're not sure about the existence, how could people show it in graphic when nobody knows how they look like? According to the internet, it is something like this. Mm, am I right? <laughs> this picture makes me feel a bit more familiar to Neutrino. In fact, Professor Yamanaka acquired the research fund using illustrations of a embryo and a mouse. He didn't get it because he engaged the judge's sympathy, but because his heard and strong impression was reached them, reached them. Understanding for me means to get the idea, but also to be encouraged to make an action. As a result, the judge let him win the fund. Hopefully, a lot of people, even if just one, understand my idea of this speech. When I was a child, science to me was one of the most exciting topics. I remember I enjoyed science workshops by college students and visiting science museums. Although it is told that people are drifting away from science these days, there are more opportunities for science to meet people, such as Knowledge Capital in Grand Fondo Osaka. So I believe presentations making complete use of graphics and illustrations can steer up the present educational circle. Thank you.